Hello and welcome to WVU Medicine Tuesday Talks. I'm your host, Mary Ravazio Menard. After losing a large amount of weight through bariatric surgery or lifestyle changes, excess skin removal surgery may be necessary for better health and comfort. Removing excess sagging skin from the abdomen, arms, and thighs is sometimes referred to as a body lift. Is it safe? Is it permanent? To find out the answers to those questions and more, we're talking with Dr. Carrie Woodbury, Chief of the WVU Medicine Division of Plastic Surgery. Welcome, Dr. Woodbury, to Tuesday Talks. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to have you here. We encourage you to post any plastic surgery after weight loss questions you may have in the comment section below, and we'll try to answer them live. Okay, so let's start first with um, what exactly happens when you have excess skin removal surgery? So often patients will present to us because they've had weight loss either from bariatric surgery or sometimes they've lost it on their own through diet and exercise. So when the patients present to us, they can often have symptoms of back pain from excess skin hanging. They could have symptoms of ulcers and rashes and those mm. can become problematic. Sometimes they have to put lotions and creams on. Sometimes patients even say, you know, Dr. Woodbury, I notice an odor and it really bothers me. So we see a number of symptoms uh, from the excess skin and patients will have back pain sometimes neck pain or shoulder pain uh, sometimes the excess skin is tender itself and so uh, we will often see these patients because of that difficulty walking or doing their day-to-day -day activities many of them in their weight loss journey want to exercise and it can be difficult with a significant amount of weight hanging yeah, yeah. now what is considered a significant amount of weight I mean I imagine this this procedure is in it for like if you've lost 10 or 20 pounds yes most of the patients Patients have lost uh, a significant amount, 80 to 100 pounds, mm -hmm. and we're very proud of the patients uh, when they come in, and they're proud and excited, but then they feel that they've gotten to a point where they can't lose any longer, and often they'll come in and say, you know, I've got this excess skin and I've tried to get it off, and it's not going anywhere. We have to cut that off, and so they need surgery to remove it. Okay. So one of the more common procedures for removing hanging skin is called, and I hope I say this right, paniculectomy. Excellent. All Good right. Mm. So what is a paniculectomy? Because I, I don't think, this isn't a tummy tuck. This is not the same thing, correct? That is correct. Okay. And so I, I'm glad that you pointed that out. So the paniculectomy is actually removal of the excess skin that's hanging. The panis is a word that means apron. And so often uh -huh. we refer to it as the apron or the overhang. And that's um, skin or excess tissue there, it includes skin and fatty tissue, uh, can cause a significant amount of problems for patients. And so the paniculectomy is removal of that excess skin or the panis. Okay. Um, what about removing excess skin from the from the arms, the thighs, or, the, or even the breasts? Yes, absolutely. So patients come in and once they've had a significant amount of weight loss, they could have excess skin on the arms when we remove that skin. We call that a brachioplasty. We can remove the excess skin from the thighs and that's called a thighplasty or a thigh lift. Sometimes it's total body lift as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. And from the breast we call that a mastopexy, which includes lifting the breast, not only removing the skin, but lifting the breast. Okay. So while you're in there, you might as well, you know, so, that's right. do a little bring cosmetic. Yeah, that's bring it up. Right. <laughs> um, do patients generally have all of these procedures if they've lost, you know, like you said, 80 to 100 pounds? Or is it like a a la carte, you know, sure. pick and choose which parts. So many of the patients have one particular area that really bothers them. Mm -hmm. And I usually like to ask the patients, what area really bothers you? Some, For some patients, it's the breast. For some, it's the abdomen. Uh, sometimes it's the thighs. And I usually focus on that area first and tell the patients it's done in stages. And so we will eventually get to all of the areas that bother them. One of the big leading factors is whether or not insurance will cover it. Mm -hmm. And some insurance companies will cover removal of the excess skin. In, particularly after weight loss, such as 80 to 100 pounds. And um, the panis, or the overhang uh, skin on the abdomen, is probably one of the most commonly uh, performed procedures uh, in patients who have insurance. Okay, so yeah, so it, it, it is generally, especially if you're having the over the belly. That's right. That, that's, that's covered exactly. by insurance. That's but what right. if you're having like skin removed from your arms or your thighs or... 
So sometimes insurance will cover those areas also. And so patients might have the brachioplasty, removal of the skin from the arms, and sometimes the thigh lift is done, or thigh plasty because insurances will cover. Um, they are harder to get approval for through insurance companies. A lot of it depends on the functional problems. If patients have difficulty with rashes or walking, or difficulty with their activities of daily living, day to day using the arms or the hands, and um, the skin gets in the way, or walking can be a problem when patients have the excess skin on the thighs. Okay. Um, what would be the range then if, if it wasn't covered by insurance? Would, is it something that you could, you know, pay self pay for? Absolutely. So some of the patients um, either don't have insurance or they um, the insurance has denied um, their mm -hmm. request for the surgery. And so we do offer the patients a cosmetic um, opportunity to have the surgery done. They will get uh, a price quote from our billing specialist mm -hmm. and she will look at each patient individually and uh, give them a price quote. And usually the prices run anywhere from about five to $10,000. Okay. Um, so, what can you expect if you have any of these procedures? Is, is, this, is this an inpatient procedure? Is it an outpatient procedure? Is it considered minimally invasive? <laughs> so it's definitely not minimally invasive. Okay, I didn't think so, but thought <laughs> I'd try. Right. So we are basically cutting all of that excess skin off and it does take a while to reconstruct it and we are putting everything back together. So the operation can be anywhere from two hours, maybe up to four or five hours, depending on what we're doing at any one time and how much we're taking off. I've taken off two pounds from the abdomen. I've taken off 20 pounds from the abdomen. So wow. it can be pretty significant at That's times. That's all skin. That's all skin and wow. some of the fatty tissue underneath. If okay. it's mostly just loose skin, it tends not to weigh as much. And so patients always want to ask, how much did it weigh? And um, if it's mostly just loose skin, it's not. it doesn't weigh yeah. Yeah. much and so it might be two or three pounds but for some patients it's a significant amount and they notice wow. right away uh, yeah. once that skin has been removed and so the patients um, will have outpatient surgery um, mostly for the arms if I'm doing the thighs or the um, abdomen thigh lift I will do as an outpatient sometimes and the abdominal area I'll usually do as an overnight stay. We call it an outpatient procedure with overnight observation in the hospital. And not everyone has to stay. A lot of it depends on other risk factors and I'm mm -hmm. really about safety for the patients. And so if I feel a patient would be, uh, it would be beneficial for the patient to stay in the hospital, I will keep them overnight. Are there any type of age restrictions for, for this kind of procedure? I mean, Absolutely does it matter? Not. Absolutely not. It's made, It's not the age that's the number, it's the health of the patient. Okay. And so we really look and focus on um, patients' health. We sit down and talk to them to see if they have diabetes or high blood pressure, or any heart problems or lung problems that might make the safe surgery a little less safe. And so we want to optimize our patients before we treat them. So that means sometimes we'll get the cardiologist to see them before surgery mm -hmm. to make sure their heart's working well and uh, do all of those things, make sure their diabetes is under under control. Um, luckily, many of these patients who have had massive weight loss notice that they're off their diabetic medications, yeah. heart medications, blood pressure medications, so they have an improvement in health, and we want to help them in their weight loss journey. Yeah, I imagine that's a big motivator, too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, well, does that also help, like maybe if they've lost weight, but they're not completely off their medication? Could having a procedure like this help them move closer toward that? I think what really helps is getting rid of that excess skin allows the patients to walk and run uh, ah. much better. So they can continue to lose weight even after they've had the surgery. So sometimes patients will lose a certain amount and say, you know, I've just gotten stuck. The insurance companies do require that patients uh, have maintained their weight, and so we like for them to lose the weight and then to be stable at the weight for a minimum of three months and usually up to six months. Uh, and that's a requirement through a lot of the insurance companies also. Okay. So generally, how long is the recovery from a procedure like this? 
So after a patient, for example, has an, a paniculectomy, mm -hmm. um, the recovery time it usually takes about two weeks where, before I let the patients go back to work okay. if they have a sedentary desk type job. Mm -hmm. And then if they have a job that requires a lot of heavy lifting, it could be from four to six weeks. The healing time is actually pretty good because we're only removing excess skin. And so it's, diff it's different from a tummy tuck. A tummy tuck is where we tighten the muscles, and that's uh -huh. more of a cosmetic procedure. Insurances won't cover that. And so with a tummy tuck, you really need to let those muscles heal, and so that takes a little bit longer. But with the paniculectomy, patients can get back to work in two weeks, and uh, the pain is not too bad because it's only skin. So that, and it's because it doesn't involve the muscle. That's it's exactly right. It's just the skin. That's exactly so, right. So, um, I was just going to ask you that. I mean, is this a is it a painful procedure? Yes, yeah, not bad. Not no, bad. not bad. There's a long scar. The scar goes from one hip all the way over to the other hip because yeah. we want to get all of that skin off. But um, it's a, it's an incision, and some patients even have some excess skin in the upper abdomen, and we will go in and remove that skin all the way up towards uh, past the belly button. Sometimes they wow. have skin in the middle, so they'll get an upside down T type of scar where we've gone in and removed skin, kind of in two dimensions, both across across the lower abdomen and along the midline. Wow. And that paniculectomy, that apron, that's the most common one? That is exactly that's the right. Most that's common. the most common one we do. Okay. Um, so what are considered, what do you consider the benefits of excess skin removal surgery? What are the benefits? So definitely uh, removing that weight. The weight can be heavy. And sometimes patients come into the office and you know, I'm lifting the heavy skin and I just wonder how they could walk around with that heavy skin all the time. Uh, clothes fitting, many of the patients say, I have a difficult time finding clothes that fit. And um, they want some help with being sure. able to get rid of that excess skin. So the benefit is definitely a health benefit, getting rid of the excess weight. We've even done some research and studies to look at the benefits of um, how it changes your um, diabetes and uh, being able to look at your glucose and how you have better control once you get rid of excess weight and to help patients maintain that weight loss. Okay, so what are the risks of this kind of surgery? Well, the risk of this surgery are similar to the risk of many operations. Patients can, of course, have problems with anesthesia. It's a very low risk, but something we talk about, and we want to optimize the patients to try to prevent those risks. Infection can happen. Um, we see infections more commonly in some of our patients who are diabetic, and so we want to make sure their diabetes is well controlled before we do the operation. And then uh, bleeding can occur, and that's that's why sometimes, depending on how much we're taking off, we might see uh, more blood loss, for example, in patients who have a significant amount, 10 or 20 pounds, mm. of excess skin and fatty tissue. And so those patients we will often keep overnight. We want to make sure they're well hydrated. And then um, patient can have um, a buildup of fluid. We call that a seroma. They can have a buildup of blood. We call that a hematoma. Okay. And um, sometimes scarring. Uh, the scarring from this ac operation actually isn't too bad. It's well hidden in the pain line or in the pant line, the belt line, mm -hmm. and so usually the scarring is not too bad. Occasionally, like I said, we'll go into the upper abdomen and take out some excess skin, and for those patients, they will have a scar down the midline. Occasionally, scars can be thick or raised or mm -hmm. stretched wide, mm -hmm. and so most patients, the benefit of the surgery far outweighs the scar. Yeah, yeah. Well, how, how long do the results of the surgery last? The results can be permanent. So of course, if patients gain weight again, they could gain excess skin again and ex excess uh, fatty tissue. But for the most part, the results are permanent. So we like for patients to have lost all of the weight that they plan to lose. Mm -hmm. We like for them to be stable. And all of this is going to improve their outcomes at the end and prevent the need for more surgery. Occasionally, patients will need to have some revisions, particularly if they've lost more weight after oh, we've done okay. the surgery. If you lose more weight, you could have more excess skin. And you mentioned that um, before you do the procedure, they have to be stable with correct. their weight loss. That's so correct. so how long, if you lose a large amount of weight, how long do you have to keep it off to prove that, okay, I'm stable, you know? Absolutely, we like to say six months. 
Okay. And so sometimes patients will have weight fluctuations, and often, particularly after bariatric surgery, we will see patients, they've lost a significant amount of weight in a short period of time, and they run in and say, I'm ready for this operation. And we'll say, let's maintain the weight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes patients will see fluctuations. They'll go up a little bit, go back down before they settle out. So we want to see that they've maintained that weight for six months. Got to find their way first. That's exactly How to stay right. in that, That's that exactly zone. That's right. Okay. Um, who then do you consider to be a good candidate for excess skin removal surgery? So the best candidates to me are the patients who have a, a significant amount of loose skin with a small amount of fatty tissue. Some of the patients have a significant amount of loose skin, but they also have a lot of fatty tissue also, and those are the ones that tend to weigh quite a, a bit when we take it off. Um, those patients are good candidates for paniculectomy. I always explain to the patients that this is not a cosmetic procedure. Uh, we try to do our best to make it look good, but mm -hmm. it's not a tummy tuck, and so we have to make sure they are realistic in their expectations for what uh, we're going to achieve after the surgery. And patients who are motivated to continue with their journey in terms of healthy eating mm -hmm. and uh, diet and exercise. I mean, because the whole purpose is to get rid of the sagging skin, not to, like you said, it's Make not more. a tummy tuck. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And does it, what determines whether you have more fatty tissue along with the excess skin? Is it like a hereditary thing or? Sometimes it's genetic. Um, most of the time I see it in patients who probably could lose a little bit more weight, but okay. they've gotten stuck at a certain point. Okay. And some of them say, you know, this is really good for me and I'm happy with this weight and this size. And so this is, you know, all I'm going to get. And so let's just take off the excess skin and fat that's hanging. And and I'm good with where I am. For some patients, they're getting back down to a healthier weight mm -hmm. and with more weight loss. And you see all of that fatty tissue underneath just really thins out mm -hmm. from the weight loss. And they just have loose skin. So there, there aren't any weight requirements. Like you have to get down to this number to qualify for this surgery. That's exactly right. It, it's all about the baseline, mm -hmm. where you start and where you end up. And so we'll see patients, you know, 300 pounds lose down to 200 pounds, and that's a significant amount of weight. So we look at, you know, what percentage of their body weight that they've lost. We look at um, their baseline and their goal weights. And I like to see patients who have hit their goals and maintain their goals. We work with our bariatric surgeons our medical weight loss team to uh, make sure patients are optimized before surgery. So this is a there's a real team approach here. It's not Absolutely. just it's just not just about the surgery. It's about Absolutely. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about the experience of the team at the WVU Medicine Plastic and uh, Reconstructive Surgery? Yes, division? absolutely. So we have a team of five surgeons, and actually we're really growing. We um, had two surgeons when I first started about three years ago, and now we have five. We just wow. had two new plastic surgeons join us this month. And so um, Dr. Gelman is one of our plastic surgeons who's been there for quite a while, and Dr. Brooks, Sebastian Brooks is another patient, Dr. Jack Gelman. And then we have Dr. Majed Malouf and Dr. Safiq, um, who is also coming. Um, Dr. Uger is our new surgeon. And so we're just happy that we're growing and we have five, a team of five. There's a significant need here, you know, out of 1.8 million people in the state of West Virginia, and we have a high rate of obesity. Yeah. And so diabetes, all of these factors, I think, contribute to the need here in West Virginia, particularly for this type of surgery, to be able to help our patients. So we have an awesome team of surgeons. Everyone's experienced and uh, we're able to offer this to the patients as they've lost the weight to give them that final reward of being able to remove that excess skin. Yeah. The patients are extremely happy. Oh, I'll bet. I, don't, I bet you don't get too many complaints, That's if right. any. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so why would, you, why would you tell somebody, why should somebody come to WVU Medicine as opposed to going somewhere else for this kind of procedure. I mean, you, you know, sometimes people think, oh, I've got to, you know, leave the state to get something like this done. Well, we have an excellent team of surgeons, and so uh, we have residents, we have a residency program, and we, in the plastic surgery division, we actually have a, a team of nurses and uh, 
advanced providers and schedulers. Everyone works well as a team, and that's what I'm really proud about uh, at WVU in plastic surgery, being a part of a team that works so well together. We help each other out. We're in clinic together. We see the patients, and we function like a family. And so we, our patients become a part of our family. So you, you, will, you would feel really comfortable coming absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Okay, so um, before we go here then, what would you say is the most important thing you want our viewers to know about excess skin removal surgery? What, what's the most important thing? I think the most important thing is to know, number one, there's something that can be done about it, and it has to be removed surgically. You can't get that excess skin to go away just with further diet and exercise. I do see some patients who have lost a, lost a significant amount of weight, but their skin tone is still pretty tight, where I could see uh, some improvement, for example, in the arms with firming and toning, mm -hmm. but when you've got a significant amount of excess skin that's hanging, there's no other choice than to remove it surgically. No amount of sit-ups is going to exactly do that, right? right? That's no. exactly right. That's exactly right. We like sit-ups because they firm and tone yeah. the muscles of the abdomen, so you might not need the muscles tightened, i.e. a tummy tuck, but still you're not going to get rid of that excess that skin. skin. And so that has to be removed surgically, and we've got a team of doctors waiting to help. Okay. So one more thing, then what would be the best way um, if somebody is interested, you know, what's the best way to contact you to, you know, find out more information? Sure. So uh, contact WVU Division of Plastic Surgery, and uh, we have a team of schedulers, and um, they will get you set up with a consultation. We'll go over our consultation, talk about uh, whether or not we think you're a great candidate, and things that we can do to optimize the results okay. ahead of time. And I believe the website if you're interested, it's wvumedicine.org slash plastic surgery. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for joining us well, today. You. you covered a lot of good information, and I, I think you will be helping a lot of people that, you know, maybe have been sitting on the fence and thinking about this. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, this edition of Tuesday Talks. If you're looking for more information about plastic surgery, visit wvumedicine.org slash plastic surgery. And join us on Tuesday Talks in two weeks when we'll talk about the WVU Medicine Children's Heart Center with Dr. Christopher Massio. I'm Mary Ravazio Menard, and on behalf of Dr. Woodbury and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us and have a great day.